Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. Today we're looking at Dance of Ibexes. This is a family game with hand management mechanics. The game is designed by Wolfgang Kramer. Dance of Ibexes is a new version of the previous game, Tanz der Hornschen. Tanz der Hornschen was released in 2004 and was published by Amigo. Later on and in 2023, Plate released a new version of the game, titled Dance of Ibexes. The game has been rethemed with new artwork and components. In the game, the players try to strategically place their tiles on the game board without letting them fall off the edge. The game board consists of multiple rows of varying lengths, with some spaces containing special symbols. There will always be four active rows only at any given time. To start the game, each player draws six random tiles from the bag and keeps them hidden from other players. The game board will be initially filled with a random tile drawn from the bag and placed on the leftmost space of the first four rows from the bottom. Each tile is unique and depicts a number ranging between 1 to 100. On each turn, players simultaneously reveal a tile from their hand. Tiles are placed in order from lowest to highest number with the placement row determined by the following rules. 1. Lowest number. If the tile's number is lower than all tiles currently on the board, it is placed in the row with the highest existing number. 2. Increasing number. The tile must have a higher number than the current last tile in that row. 3. Smallest difference. If multiple rows meet the above criteria, the tile is placed in the row where the difference between the new tile and the current last tile is smallest. Once the row is completed by having a tile placed in the final space, the player must 1. Score the penalty points on that space of that row. 2. Move the just played tile to the next empty row above. 3. Remove the remaining tiles from the com that completed row, keeping 1 to 2 and discarding the rest. At the start of each round, if a player has no more tiles in their hand, they draw 6 tiles from the bag. Before, their, before revealing their tiles, the players can buy 1-3 to three random tiles from the bag for 1 negative point each. A player may not have more than 9 tiles at any, any time. There are some special spaces on the board as well. Eagle Spaces loses you that amount of points if, you're, if, you're, if it was your tile placed there. If a row is active and shows a double play symbol and is uncovered, players must play two tiles each turn until all the double play symbols are all covered. If a row is active and shows a salt symbol and it is uncovered, all points earned will be positive until all of the salt symbols are all covered. Once a player lands on a or passes either spaces 37 or 49 on the scoreboard, this will trigger a solidarity of Ibex function. In the next round, before choosing and revealing a tile, the player with the least amount of points will reveal a tile to play first, followed by the runner-up, and so on, up until the player that activated this function. This function can only be activated once. Although could be activated again if the players manage to get positive points later and go below 37 or 49 points again. The game ends when a player reaches the end of the score track, 60 points, or there are no more tiles to purchase or refill their hand. The player with the fewest points wins. Dance of Ibex is a family game with hand management mechanics. The game is designed by Wolfgang Kramer and is illustrated by Wang Jin Gil and Jian Li. The game is published by Plate. The game can be played by 2 to 8 players. I love the theme and setting. The game offered actual ibexes and meeples. The board is a layout of a mountain and a cliffside. Eagles and salt were added for extra flavor. The artwork looked good. I enjoyed all the different illustrations and the use of colors for all of the components in this game, including the game box. The iconography used on the game board was also very well done and easy to read. The components used were great. The game box itself was fantastic and transformed into the game board as well. The transforming box is one of the publisher's signature productions. 
The tiles used were great chunky wooden pieces. The Ibex's anime pose used looked adorable. The bag was great, it was big enough to accommodate all of the tiles and was of good quality. All of the components fit snugly inside the game box. The gameplay is fun and chaotic. I enjoyed the tile selection and placement phases. All players select a tile secretly then reveal it simultaneously and then proceed to place all the tiles on the board. It's wacky to see who's uh, whose tiles will be will go off the edge and which player will be the one to score negative points. The extra elements such as the eagles, the salt, the double play and the dance of ibex functions were all great additions. They added to the overall fun factor of the game. The game kind of feels like the designer's other game, Take 5, 6 Nimit. But this, one's, this one feels kind of like the board game version of that game in a way. The game is fast paced, very easy to learn and teach, plays best with 5 or more players and typically takes around 45 minutes to play. Overall, Dance of Ibexes was a fun and wild game for a big group. Very enjoyable, light hearted and just good quality time. Thank you so much for tuning in, hope you enjoyed this episode. Take care and until the next one, peace.